If I were to ask you to name 20 species off the top of your head, you'd probably name mostly animals, and there's a good reason for that. They are the most diverse group on Earth. Of all the six groups that we will talk about, animals account for about two-thirds of the known species. Now, scientists tell us there's a lot more species out there that we don't know, most of little stuff like bacteria, but of the ones we do, animals really take the cake. About 75% of animals, though, are like this little guy. Little bugs, crabs, millipedes, things with an exoskeleton and jointed legs. So they're not like us. Although they might have a nervous system and two little eyes staring back at you, so they kind of feel familiar in a way, they still don't stay warm on a cold day. They don't even have a backbone, much less a skeleton. So most animals are really different than us. Only a small slice, about 4%, have a backbone, and most of those are fish. So when we picture th something with fur or feathers, I think that's the animal kingdom. Really, there's a lot more to it than that. Let's explore a little bit. Well, just to remind you that the animal kingdom sits right here within the domain Eukarya. Let's start with where we find animals. Really just about everywhere on Earth. Land, sea, sky, underground, you name it, they're there. Bacteria probably went out in terms of a greater diversity of habitats, but animals are pretty impressive and adaptable. When it comes to what animals look like, they're pretty good size. All animals are made up of many cells. They're multicellular. Now, not all of them can be seen with the naked eye. Some actually still need a microscope, but they're all multicellular. Most of them with organs and systems and tissues, with really few exceptions. One of the odd things about the animal kingdom is none of the cells have cell walls. Now, animals stand up and protect themselves with a skeleton, whether that's an external or an internal one like we have, but our cells themselves don't have a cell wall, so they kind of have a rounder appearance most of the time. And you know, we're kind of squishy and soft, other than the hard parts like the skeleton. So that's an interesting feature that sets animals apart. I want to take a little time to go over the animal family tree, but with a million and a half species, that would take a while. Even if I went through one a second, you'd be sitting there for two and a half weeks. So let's take it a little briefer. But you probably picture something like this with a lot of familiar animals, but really that misses most of it. Most of them, things like these ants and sea stars and whatnot that don't have a backbone. This gets a little more representative, but still misses the mark. Most animals are things like this, not things with four legs and a backbone. These are the familiar ones, the chordates. They have a backbone, but they range from stuff in the sky to the sea, from above ground, underground, fins to flippers to feathers and fur. Chordates are really diverse, but they're not representing that many species. Most of the rest of it's in the ocean. Things like sponges, a little like your kitchen sponge, but these are living things. They do create movement with these interesting cells with flagella that draw in the plankton that they eat. But those are very simple animals, not a huge impact on human life. Same with cnidarians. Uh, unless you get stunned by a jellyfish, they're probably not going to affect you a lot. They are important. Corals, sea anemones, all that is just part of ocean life. So a lot of diversity there, as well as ocean flatworms like this guy here. Uh, but there are some flatworms that impact us, like these tapeworms, that if they get in your intestine and latch on, can really steal a lot of nutrients. Not as much of a problem in the developed world now, but they, they do crop up now and again. Mollusks, mostly sea dwellers, again, from octopus to clams. We have a few, like the land snails here, that live on land, but uh, most of them in the water. Segmented worms, there are a few interesting examples of sea dwellers. Uh, you might be familiar with leeches and, and certainly regular earthworms. Again, not a huge impact on human life. But these worms, this is a different group of worms. They operate differently, but they have a bigger impact. They used to have a huge impact uh, in on human life and still do in many areas, but shoes solved a lot of that. So these hookworms 
uh, would enter from the soil into wounds on the feet and then get into the body and cause problems. In fact, you may have had a dog or other pet wormed. They take medications to get rid of these worms that make their way into the body and, and invade organs. So roundworms, microscopic creatures that uh, do have a health impact. Now, arthropods, most of them don't bother us. Yeah, you got the spiders that, that might bite us and whatnot, uh, lots and lots of insects, a few crabs and lobsters and things under the ocean, but probably the biggest one in terms of its impact is the mosquito. Mosquito is not only annoying, but can spread disease from one person to another because they suck blood. So major health concern there with mosquitoes. And there are quite a few species of them. And then we're back into the ocean with sea stars and sea cucumbers and sea urchins. And we could keep going and going with all these other groups as well. Uh, I'll stop it there, but I will mention that some of them, like the rotifers and water bears here, are microscopic. You can't see them without a microscope, but they still have, and you can even see it in the rotifer here, a complete digestive system. They're multicellular. They're just small. So animals have a, an amazing diversity of forms that you really have to sit back and appreciate. When it comes to animal reproduction, most of this is sexual reproduction. You have to have mates go through a typical life cycle. You're probably pretty familiar with the life cycle by now. You've seen it before. There are a few exceptions. There are a few animals that could be cut in half and regrow all their parts, uh, but that's more the exception than the rule, at least in most cases. And most animals have really dedicated themselves to sexual reproduction. Now, plants reproduce sexually, but they have both male and female parts in the same flower and can often pollinate themselves. But animals have taken it to the next degree and separated genders in most cases where they have to reproduce sexually. So of all the groups out there, animals tend to depend on sexual reproduction. They've kind of, I guess, as a kingdom decided, this is so important to have the variation that we're gonna make sure that happens every time. When it comes to getting energy, animals eat. Because they're pretty big, they can. And although their diets vary widely from all plants to all other animals, um, animals eat. They have a mouth, usually a digestive system, not in all cases, but the vast majority, and they consume that food, break it down, and use it to power all the life processes. And animals need a lot of energy, especially those of us that are warm-blooded to help us stay warm. But all animals move. More than any other kingdom, they move. And you won't find other groups of organisms with such a diversity of their ability to swim and fly and crawl and run and jump and all the other things that animals do. And that requires a lot of energy. The animal kingdom. Well, definitely more than just birds and bunnies. Most of them, as we said, were bugs. In terms of their impact on our lives, it's pretty significant. You know, from the daily, just our pets uh, comforting us and keeping us company, to work animals that do jobs for us, to animals that are livestock that provide us with food, um, and an especially important source of high protein food. Uh, animals have a big impact. Although one of the biggest impacts, some of these guys, the mosquito, for example, carries a lot of diseases uh, to and from. So in terms of the impact on human health, we might fear bees and bears quite a bit because of their ability to inflict pain, but to cause disease, mosquitoes are probably one of the more dangerous, deadly animals on Earth. Look out for those guys. I hope even this short presentation has helped you to appreciate the diversity of animals out there. Whether it's land, air, or sea, there are so many different types of animals to appreciate, each with their own interesting life. That's it for this time. Until next time, keep appreciating life.